So it's time to take our tithes, and uh, I hope I will be able to do it as briefly as I can so we'll be able to pray. And today, in taking our tithes, I want to address some issues or some questions that have come up with this altar of prosperity. I remember that I've shared with us that this is an altar of prosperity that we are raising. And uh, somehow it appears uh, people have not really understood it or understood me. So today I will take some time to answer some questions that I have received concerning this. First and foremost, uh, somebody called me last week after the service and uh, he said he had a dream and in that dream he saw like a tap, you know, uh, a run tap uh, with running water. But that it was outsiders that were coming to fetch water from the tap. And those that were inside the church were not fetching the water. We are not, you know, drinking from the tap, from the stream of water. But people outside were coming to fetch water from, from the tap. And I was wondering, what could that mean? Then he told me he believes it is something relating to this altar of prosperity with the communion and the titan that, you know, um, I, 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 I'm, I'm sharing that he doesn't think many people have really understood what I'm doing or what I'm saying, but maybe, and the person is not, he follows us online. So people that are following online is catching the vision, is drinking the water, and people that are in the house are not following. So, you know, I started wondering, what, what, how can I do it? What can I do? So that's the first thing I want you to understand, but I believe God that he will help us to drink that water in the name of Jesus. Because the scripture says that the husband man that laborate is the first partaker of the fruit thereof. We cannot labor in this house and then outsiders will come and enjoy. Of course, outsiders, we are not restricting them, but we must be the first. So this is why I take time to explain and to teach so that, because the person told me actually what he believes that people must align to the teachings to be able to drink from that stream of water. And so that's why I, I do this. So the first question I got is, why don't you make the communion open? Or general, I mean, let everybody come and take the communion, whether you gave tight or you, you, you didn't give tight. Just make it open. And then I answered. Now, let me read it. Why I'm saying this is that I know, you know, when one person asks a question, know that at least there are two or three people that have the same question in their minds because human beings are all, all, almost the same. If one person has a question, there are two or three people that have the same question. And even if they don't have the same question, the answer to that question will answer something in their lives that they don't even, they have not had the, an, the question, but the answer will benefit them. Praise the Lord. So this is why I'm taking the question generally. Now let's look, uh, read uh, Romans chapter 14 and verse 23. Romans chapter 14 and verse 23. The scripture says, And he that doubted is damned if he eats, because he eateth not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Whatsoever that is not of faith is sin. If you, anything you are doing and you are not doing it by faith, becomes sin. It becomes religion. So, if, in the first place, why I cannot make it open, just anybody come and take communion, is that that was not the instruction God gave me. God gave me a specific instruction and said, 
take communion with titan. That is how God said it. So I cannot do outside what God told me to do. God cannot tell me, take communion. If God wanted it to be open, then he would have told me every Sunday, give communion to the church. But when he says, take communion with titan, then I must do it with titan. That's number one. And then number two, I want to emphasize that tithe is not a requirement to take communion. So you don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that before you take communion, you must give tithe. As a matter of fact, we take communion here every week, every Wednesday evening. When we meet in church for our prayer meeting, we take communion. And that one is not an issue of tithing. It's if you want to take communion, come uh, Wednesday evening, you will take communion. It, tithing is not a qualification. It's not a requirement for communion, for taking communion. The scriptures, the only qualification for taking communion is that you are born again. If you are born again, you are qualified. And the scripture says, Take communion as often as you can, as often as you do it. Remember me, that's what uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 says, as often. So it's not a requirement. But in this case, God specifically told me, take communion with Titan. So this, com this particular communion is for Titus, particularly for Titus. Praise God. So... Now, if I, if I make it open, then people may, number one, misunderstand it. Number two, may abuse it. And number three, we not even know why they are taking it. Do you understand me? So now, where, where we read says that whatsoever that is not of faith is sin. How, what is faith? We have done some series of teachings on faith here, that faith is action. Faith is different from belief. Belief is what you have in your mind, or in your heart. I believe that God will bless me. But faith is what you do with what you believe. I believe that God will bless me, yes. Then I give God my tithe so that he will bless me. That giving is your faith because faith is putting action on what you believe. So now to do it by faith, I need an action from you. I need an action. I need you to put an action to what you believe. And that is why I said, if you have your tithe, give. If you don't have tithe to give, you can make a vow. And I showed, you, I showed us from the scripture where Jacob did not have anything to give, but he made a vow. You can make a vow that if God blesses me, I will give my tithe. That means you have committed yourself. That is action. And that is, belief, that is faith. Praise the Lord. You don't have a tithe to give. I understand that some people are still you know, struggling. Some people are still trying to work things out. Then make a vow. If you don't have a tithe to give and you cannot also make a vow, then it tells me you don't believe in it. it te that simply tells, that is how I, that is how I understand it. And if you don't believe in it, then you don't have a portion in it. If you don't have a tithe, then, but you believe in it, then you should be able to make a vow. You should be able to say, oh God, I don't have tight, but I believe what pastor is saying. If you are going to bless me in this land that I will have enough, I will give you my tight. If you are not able to make that commitment, to me, is a sign that you don't believe in it. And then there is nothing more I can do about that. And secondly, maybe you have some seeds to give. But it's not up to the tithe because the tithe is 10%. But maybe you have some amount of money, let's say 1% of your income or 2% or just an amount, a seed that you can give. You can use that seed as a point of contact and say, Father, I know that this is not up to the tenth, 
but this is all I have to give after I paid my rent. This is all I have to give. As I give this, Lord, I believe that you will multiply me, that I will be able to pay my, my tithe complete. Then make that commitment. Give whatever you have to give, and then come and take the, the communion. I want to make this clear so that you will drink from that river. Praise the Lord. And then the person now asked another question. He said, okay, if I give my tithe once because I'm a salaried earner, I, I, take, I take my salary only once in a month. So if I give my tithe on that week, I come and take uh, communion on that Sunday. Can I, take the co can I take communion for the rest of the month? So that because I've paid my tithe for the month. I said, well, according to the instruction God gave me, he said, take communion with tithing. So it's only when you tithe that you take the communion. So the week you, took, you pay your tithe is the week you take the communion. But if you want to take communion the rest of the Sundays, then make a vow. Okay, for an instance, I, took, I paid my tithe on Wednesday this week, and then I come to church today, I take the communion, then next week I don't have time to pay, but I want to take the communion again. I can come Sunday next week. I say, God, it's not impossible that you can, you can give me a job that I will be receiving salary every week, or that not, apart from job, you can bless me weekly that I will have enough money every week. People can bless you. People can sow seed to your life. You can have a business that you are earning money weekly. I mean, it's not impossible. You can say, God, if you can give me that kind of business that I'm earning money every week to be giving my tithe every week, I will, I, will, I will come and give my tithe every week here. And then come and take that communion. So simply, in a nutshell, what I'm trying to say is that I need your faith to come alive. And how you can make your faith to come alive is by putting an action to what you believe. You can put your action to what you believe by making a commitment, by making a vow, by giving what you have, or however you want to do it. But I need that commitment because that is what brings your faith alive. And if you can do that, you are welcome to take the communion. Praise the Lord. Whether you have paid your tithe or you have not paid your tithe, but you are committed to it, you have made a commitment, you are welcome to take the communion. But if you have not paid your tithe and you don't also want to make a commitment, you don't want to make a vow, then um, you are pushing me too far, which I don't, I don't want to go there. So please, I will allow you until you understand, until your faith grows, and then you, you will come to take the communion. Praise the Lord. I don't know if you understand me, and if you don't understand me, I can take your, even if this is what I do today, I can take your questions. Or maybe we take it uh, during the workers' meeting. We have our workers' meeting next Sunday. So write your questions, what you don't understand, and then we handle it at the workers' meeting. So everybody will understand, and everybody will follow and align. Praise the Lord. So today, I want to welcome every one of us, if you have paid your tithe in the week, either you have paid electronically, or you have... Uh, your tithe here to give cash. I want to welcome you forward. Or you gave your tithe for your children. Ask your children to come forward. Or you don't have a tithe. You want to make a commitment. You want to make a vow to God. You can come forward. Or you don't have a tithe. And you have a seed. You can use that seed as a point of contact. To come forward. And take your communion. God bless you. And please, I want, like I said last week, if we are coming, we have to come and be serious. After praying, I don't want anybody to come forward anymore. Praise the Lord. When I finish praying, don't come forward anymore. But if you are coming now, please come. And if you are watching online, 
you are taking your communion, please bring forward the communion so it will be blessed. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the power of your word. He said that your word will not come back to you void except it accomplishes that for which you have sent it. Lord, your word has come forth this morning. You sent forth your word and you healed them from their diseases and delivered them from their destructions. Father, as your word has gone forth today, I ask, O oh God, that it will break every yoke of the enemy in this house in the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever be the yoke that has hindered your people from receiving the blessing with which you have blessed us, this morning, let your word that is like a hammer break that yoke into pieces in the name of Jesus. Father, as many as have believed you, believed your word, and put an action to their belief by bringing their tithes this morning, or by making a commitment, making a vow to you, or sowing a seed, believing you for a greater increase in their finances, I ask, O oh God, that your word will bear fruit in their lives. In the name of Jesus, that this water of prosperity that is running, this grace of prosperity that is running in this house, will be, it will manifest in their lives, that they will partake of it. In the name of Jesus, I declare that nobody under the sound of my voice, under this house, under this grace, under this ministry, will be left aside. In the name of Jesus, Thank you, Father. I ask that their tithes, their sins, their vows will be acceptable before you. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, behold the bread and the wine. And those that are online presenting their communion before you. I ask, O oh God, that your spirit will brood upon it. Let this bread be the body of Jesus that was broken for our bodies to be whole. Let this wine be the blood of Jesus that was shed, that the blessing of Abraham may come upon us. Lord, today as we partake of this communion, I decree your blessing upon your people. Let it be the blessing with which, Abra with which Melchizedek blessed Abraham in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Receive all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. You may take the bread and the wine and go back to your seat. So right now, I will receive our tithes. And today, I want to still address some issues uh, regarding the tithing. I have made it abundantly clear in this house. From January, we started. Uh, taking communion with our, tithe, our tithes. But I still have some questions that are coming, and I still see some uh, attitudes or behaviors that I want to address. So this morning, I, I have noticed that um, whenever I come up here for tithes, uh, to receive our tithes, you know, uh, some people just come up to give money so they can take the communion. I've noticed that, you know, some people, maybe when I call for tithe, they start checking their, their wallets, start checking their phones to switch or to find any, any money to come and give so they can take communion. And I want to address that. I want to make it abundantly clear to this house that I am not selling communion. The communion is not for sale. 
and I have not asked you to give money before you take communion. Please, let's, let's get it clear. I have not asked you to bring money so you can take communion. What I have asked you is simply to release your faith and bring your tithes or your seed. If you don't have your tithe, but you have a seed that you want to use as a, as a point of contact to believe God, to increase you. Or maybe you don't even have a seed, but you want to make a vow. And then come forward and make that commitment and take the communion as a token of the blessing according to Genesis chapter 14, verse 18. Can you give me that scripture? Genesis chapter 14 and verse 18. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God, verse 19, and he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be the Most High God, which had delivered thy enemies into thy hand. And he, Abraham, gave him, Melchizedek, the tithes of all. So this is about tithing. And the communion is a token of the blessing. The scripture tells us that in Galatians 3 verses 13 and 14 that Christ died on the cross that the blessing of Abraham may come upon the Gentiles. And the communion is a token of the death and the the the. the Flesh, the body of Jesus that was broken and his blood that was shed. The communion is a symbol, a token of that grace that Jesus released. So when Melchizedek blessed Abraham, Abraham gave him the tithe. So this is what I am doing. I am asking you to release your faith with your tithe or your seed or to make a vow. To make a commitment and come and take the communion as a token of the blessing. If your faith is not in it, or if you do not believe in tithing, please do not come until your faith grows up to that. Why I'm saying that is that if we don't understand what we are doing, and we don't put our faith in it, it will be misunderstood. And if it is misunderstood, it will be abused. If it is abused, it will turn to a mere religion. It will, it will just become a religion. So I want to make it clear. Stop coming to give more. If that money is not your tithe, and is not your seed, and is not a vow that you are making, please, you can wait for the offering. When the offering comes, you can come and give offering. But to come and maybe just give an amount so you can take communion is not accepted. And I want to address it. I want to say, please stop doing that if you have been doing it. And if you choose to do that, you are doing it on your own. Because I can't stop anybody that comes here. I can't chase anybody back. But if you are not coming according to my instructions, it is between you and God. I leave you and God to that. Now, let me read another scripture to buttress what I have said. Give me Galatians chapter 2 and verse 21. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 21 says, I do not frustrate the grace of God for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Go to chapter 3, verse 1. Remember chapter 2, verse 21. It says he does not frustrate the grace of God. I will show us what it means to frustrate the grace of God. Then in chapter 3, verse 1, he said, O foolish Galatians, who had 
bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ had been evidently set forth, crucified among you. In verse 3, he said, This only would I learn of you. Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? And verse, five, verse 5, He therefore that ministered to, this, to you the Spirit, and worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith. Now you can stop here. You, you, you see that he's comparing faith or spirit and the law. Go back to 221. Anything you are doing without faith is frustrating the grace of God. If you come to give your tithe here or to give any of any amount, if your faith is not in it, you are frustrating the grace of God. You frustrate the grace of God if you do not do it by faith. Now go again to James chapter 2 and verse 18. James chapter 2 and verse 18. Yeah, a man may say, thou hast faith and I have works. Show me thy, thy faith without thy works and I will show thee my faith by my works. And 19, thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But we thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. Now we can stop there. So my submission to you this morning, works without faith is frustration of grace. Anything you do in the, in the church, if your faith is not in it, you are frustrating the grace of God. Number two, faith without works is dead. According to James chapter 2, verse 19. Faith, if you say, ah, I believe in tithing, I believe God will bless me, and you don't make a commitment, then that faith is dead. But look at what the scripture admonishes us. In James chapter 2, verses 22, we can now see that faith mixed with works is justification. Praise the Lord. See, as thou have faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. No, this go to 21. James 2, 21. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? So you now see faith plus works is equal justification. Works means what you do. The, the things you do physically, like coming to give your, your tithe, is works. But faith is what you believe, believing the word of God. So I want you to say this together with me so I make sure you understand me. Works without faith is frustration of grace. Faith without works is dead. But faith with works is justification. One more time. Faith with works is justification. Praise the Lord. I believe you understand me. So let's uh, receive our tithes. If you are giving your tithes, if you have a seed that you want to use as a commitment, if you want to make a vow to God that if God will bless you according to his word, you are going to give him a tenth of his blessing in your life. So I want to invite us forward. And if you are online, you are giving your tithe, I want to uh, uh, ask you to bring your communion so I can bless it. Praise the Lord. Can we close our eyes? 
And anyone that is com coming forward is welcome to come forward. But as I finish praying, I don't want any other person to come. If you are coming, come now. If you are not coming, you can stay back. But after prayer, I don't want any other person to come. Praise the Lord. And if you have given a tithe for your children, please uh, bring your children so they can uh, take the blessing. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you this morning for the power of your word. You said that your word will not come back to you void, except it accomplishes that for which you have sent it. Lord, this morning you have sent your word, and we have believed your word. And we come this morning before you by faith, bringing our tithes, our seeds, and our vows before you as our works in your house, mixed with our faith. And therefore, I decree that as many as have come in this order, that they be justified in your presence, that they be justified, Amen. that they be justified, Amen. that they be blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Because faith with works is justification. The same way you justify Abraham when he believed you and offered his son. Father, I ask that this one be justified. In blessing, bless them. In the name of Jesus. Let your blessing wipe and break every curse speaking in their lives. In the name of Jesus. And behold, the children, O oh God, that have come. Father, I pray that from this young age, your blessing will speak in their lives. That as they grow, they grow in the blessing. In the name of Jesus. And I present the bread and the wine before you. Both this in-house and anyone that has presented his communion online. I bring that communion before this altar this morning. I ask, O oh God, that your spirit will brood upon this communion. Let this bread be the body of Jesus and let the wine be the blood of Jesus. And as we partake of it this morning, Father, we receive your blessing in our lives and we decree your blessing over our lives. Father, let this be the blessing with which Melchizedek blessed Abraham in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let it speak in our lives, O God, and let your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. You may take your communion and please go back to your seats. Amen. So having said that, let me take our tithes before I will I will welcome uh, Sister Eve to take our offerings and then we continue with the service. I want to read from First Corinthians chapter 11, and from verse 23. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and from verse 23. It says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as often as you drink it 
in remembrance of me. Praise the Lord. Verse 26 now. He said, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. Praise God. I want to address three specific words in this text. Number one, in verse 24, it says, and when he had uh, given thanks, he broke it and said, take it, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. I want to address that word, remembrance. Number two, um, in verse 25, he said, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. I want to address the word testament. And this do you as often as you drink it. I want to address the word often, as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Number one, what does it mean when he says as often as you drink it? It means you can take the communion as many times as you want. I mean, without restriction. You can take it every day. You can take it every month. You can take it every week. You can take it every year. So there, it depends on, the, on how God is leading the pastor of the church. There are churches that take communion once a year. There are churches that take communion once every month. There are churches that take communion every week. For us, we take communion every week. That's number one, what it means by as often as you, as you take it. Number two, it also means you can take communion for a specific situation. You can take communion. I have, last year we had a testimony here, somebody that was sick, that was you know, uh, that was afflicted in his body and his strength was failing him. And God ministered to him, take communion and go to pastor, let pastor bless for you. And he brought the communion, I prayed over it, he took it, he said, immediately that affliction disappeared. So you can take communion for a specific situation, a specific need. You can take communion when you are in need, you can take communion when you are sick because that body of Jesus that was broken is so that your own body will be healed. You can take communion when you notice that there is a curse operating in your life. I shared a testimony here some time ago. There was a young girl of about 17, 18 years that came to our service almost running mad. She was almost going insane, you know, talking you know, incoherently. And incidentally, we were taking communion. And that of, I mean, I don't know what she thought we were doing. She came and took the communion and ate. I said, good. So when I, I came to pray for her, I said to her, you took the communion. That means this communion is a covenant with the blood of Jesus. Therefore, every other evil covenant operating in your life has to break because of the covenant of the blood of Jesus. And there and then, she was delivered. Now she's big, married with children, a nurse now, it's a, it's a qualified nurse now. So you can take communion when you notice a curse operating in your life. You can take communion with, when you notice that your finances are not straight. You are battling with your finances, battling with debt, with credit cards. Because the scripture says that Jesus was made poor that we might be rich. So you can take, and when he was made poor was when he, his body was broken. Praise God. I'm just explaining the word, how often you take it. So you can take it for any situation. But this morning, we are taking the communion for our tithes. Praise God. That's number one. Number two. It says, as often as you do it, remem in remembrance of me. What do we, do does it mean we forgot Jesus Christ? No. But what it means to remember 
is to bring, to activate, to bring to life everything that Jesus did for us on the cross of Calvary. The scripture says his body was broken, that our own body would be healed. He became a curse that we might be blessed. He became poor that we might be rich. He became sin that we might be the righteousness of God. Remember everything that Jesus did on the cross for us. As we take the communion, we activate the power of the cross in our lives. Praise God. And thirdly, he said, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. Like I shared, when we take the communion, we activate the covenant with the blood of Jesus. And every other covenant that is operational in your life, we break in the name of Jesus. There are evil covenants have taught us here, ancestral causes coming from our fathers, our ancest uh, ancestral bloodlines. You don't know. You may not even know about it, but maybe it's following you. There are blood covenants that they have done with the blood of animal, with the blood of human. Some people go to the extent of shedding blood of human beings to afflict causes in a family. But today, by the covenant made with the blood of Jesus, I decree that every curse and every evil covenant operating in your life is broken now. In the name of Jesus. For the scripture says that the blood of Jesus speaks better things than the blood of Eber and the blood of any other thing. So every other voice, every other blood that is speaking against your life, today they are silenced by the voice of the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Finally, if you media give me Genesis chapter 14 and verse 18. Genesis chapter 14 and verse 18. He says, And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be the Most High God, which shall deliver thy enemies into thy hand. And he gave him tithes of all. That's Abraham gave Melchizedek tithes, and Melchizedek gave him bread and wine. And I've taught us here that the bread and wine is symbolic of the communion, the body of Jesus that was broken and the blood of Jesus that was shed. And that is also a symbol of the blessing that Jesus released for us on the cross of Calvary. For Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 says that Christ became a curse for us that the blessing of Abraham may come upon the Gentiles. Praise the Lord. So this morning, I want to invite us to come forth if we are paying our tithes. If you have your tithe cash, you want to give cash, you can come forward. If you're giving online or by switch, uh, media, you can show me the, the switch numbers. You can uh, switch. And if you are following online, you want to give your tithes as well. Please prepare your communion so I can uh, bless it. And uh, if you are giving tithes for your children, please bring your children to take the, the blessing. And... If you want to make a vow, maybe things are still difficult for you, but you are believing God to make a way for you, to bless you, please come forward. If you want to sow a seed, please come forward. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the power of your word. He said that your word 
will not come back to you void, except it accomplishes that for which you have sent it. Lord, your word has come for this afternoon. I ask that it accomplishes that which you have sent it for this house this morning in the name of Jesus. For these ones that have come in obedience to your word, that word will not come back to you void. It will accomplish that which you have sent it to their lives. Every yoke of the enemy in their lives be broken. Every curse speaking in their lives be dissolved. In the name of Jesus, is anyone sick among them? Let there be healing now. Is anyone struggling in their finances, struggling with debt and credit cards? Father, by the reason of the body of Jesus and the blood of Jesus, the blessing of Abraham, let there be the anointing for prosperity released upon them. Let there be prosperity in this house. In Jesus' name. And for those online, following online, Father, I ask as well that your word will go forth to them. You send forth your word and you heal them and deliver them from their destructions. Let it be their portion now. In Jesus' name. I bring their communions, every communion that has been lifted up before you online. And this communion here this morning in-house. I bring them before the throne of grace. Lord, I ask that your spirit will brood upon it. Let it be the body of Jesus. Let it be the blood of Jesus. And as we partake of it this morning, let it be the blessing with which Melchizedek blessed Abraham. Let the blessing of Abraham speak in their lives. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. We receive it this morning. We declare your word over our lives, the, the, the word of blessing. We declare your blessing over your, our lives. We activate that covenant over our lives. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. Receive all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. God bless you. Please take your communion. If you have your tithe, you can drop and back to your seat and God bless you.